Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to show you guys how to import Cinema DNG RAW files into Premiere Pro natively and how to color grade those natively in Premiere. Um, so, you know, beforehand, a lot of times when you would grade Cinema DNG footage, whether it was from a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera or, you know, any Blackmagic camera, they're usually the big Cinema DNG guys or anything, you know, this could be Airy RAW, R3D files, um, I think R3D are a little bit different, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to basically show you the Cinema DNG way, which does go for a lot of other file types. So, you're going to go to your media browser, and if you don't have your media browser tab anywhere in your editor, just click Window, uh, you're going to do Media Browser, there it is. Um, so, mine's already up, so obviously I'm just going to leave it there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where I have mine. So I know I have mine in my four terabyte and this folder and they're in my video raw files. So I'm gonna click video raw files. Now these are the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera folders that you know contain like thousands of DNG files. But when we click on it, Premiere CC 2015, which just a disclaimer, it has to be in this version. Um, if you click on that folder, you're not gonna get a thousand DNG files, but you're going to actually get an interpreted video raw file. So I'm going to right click and then import. Boom. It's imported. So now I'm going to go back and let's pick another shot. Um, I don't want to pick that one. I like this one. This one's funny. This is for our Doritos commercial. Um, he loses his teeth so you can kind of see he's got no teeth there. <laughs> um, all right. So We've imported these files, so we're going to drag these two onto the timeline. Or no, actually it's not. It's this one, sorry. And this guy up here. So look at those nasty teeth. Look at that, right? <laughs> Alright, so we're going to open up our color tab. And let's actually do this first clip here first. So. Adobe Premiere Pro is actually interpreting this Cinema DNG raw. It is not just converting it or doing anything different. It is actually, when you edit over here in the Lumetri color panel, it is truly editing the raw image and not just a, you know, Rec. 709 version of that or, you know, some type of version of that. It is actually editing the original raw file. So when you change your white balance over here, it's actually going to be changing the raw file and not just adding on top. So that's really great to know that Adobe now supports that. But again, that it's in 2015. So let's do a basic grade here. Um, I want to cool this down just a little bit to like negative four, just because I know what I'm going to do with this in a minute. Um, so I'm going to cool it down a little bit. That's pretty neutral, a little bit blue. Let's work with our exposure. Um, those highlights, they are clipped. So I kind of like them somewhere in and around here where his face is in this 70, 60, somewhere in around there, the high spots. And then obviously the clipped is clipped, but that's no big deal. Um, we're gonna drag our shadow, let's do our blacks actually, let's bring those down. Um, we want it to be contrasty, but not too much. I'm gonna bring these down to about somewhere in the five, right here on our um, scopes. You see we're right about that five or so line. I like that. It's not too dark, but it's still got some good contrast. Let's bump up the saturation. Let's see what our vector scope. So I don't know if you can see, but when we jack up the saturation, this is about on based on his skin tone and everything else where I'd want it 140. But I don't know if you can see, but on the vector scope, there's these peaks over here in the yellow. And that's this wood. I don't know why this gave off such a yellow look, but it, I don't like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our curves panel in the Lumetri color panel and the hue and saturation curve. So what we want to do is we want to take out that nasty yellow that we see over here. So luckily, if you know what a vector scope is, it lines right up with this color circle wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple points. I want his orange skin tones, but I don't want that nasty green. So I'm going to make basically three points and then I'm gonna drag this down so look at that that gross yellow disappears as you can see it goes off the charts and then it dips away I like it pretty low because it is horribly ugly so I'm liking somewhere in about here we're getting rid of now if I turn this off you can see 
Look at the difference. See that yellow? And I don't know if you can see it down here too. Watch. When I turn that on, those yellows are cut way down. And same with that vector scope. Look right in here. Cuts that way down. It looks so much better. So we did our basic correction. We you know fixed our blacks, our highlights, and our saturation. And now we could even saturate it more if we wanted to. But I'm kind of I'm happy around that 145 to 150 mark. So anyway, this looks much nicer. The green back here is way less intrusive and annoying. So I don't really want to do anything creatively. Um, this is a pretty basic shot. Uh, color wheels, again, I'm not really wanting to change too much. But I probably will add a little bit of a vignette. Let's do an extreme one to kind of see. So I like something like that. Just so we... Let's feather it out quite a bit. Make it a little stronger. There we go. So that's a nice clip. Now we see um, if we go into our effects controls and we turn that off. That was our... Uh, Cinema DNG raw and then boom now we could click high dynamic range if we really wanted to I don't think that makes a difference I haven't seen it I would say if you had a really high dynamic range shot or if you were you, yeah like I would say if you're shooting raw outside and you had like a really really wide dynamic range I would turn that on uh, but for this purpose that color grade looks perfectly good to me. I like that. It looks natural. Um, we probably could take the contrast up a tad, but I like it. All right, so let's jump on to this one. So, actually, you know, I'm going to throw in this other guy too quick. Let's go back to the editing tab. I am going to throw in this bathroom shot, and I'll show you why. We're going to do this one. So, the thing is here, I wanted to emulate what looked like a scurvy you know scurvy <laughs> um nasty bathroom with those like greenish tint fluorescent lights but not too extreme i didn't want it to look like he was in a dungeon somewhere so let's pull back up our scopes so we can see that the red is obviously pretty intense um and our white balance is a tad bit off it's a little bit warmer on this wall but we wanted to have that cool green look so let's go into basic correction I'm gonna drag my color temperature over. So I want it to be really cold. Let's let's balance those out. That looks pretty balanced. Now, if you don't know how to balance or, or look at a white balance and, and sort of see where it's at, this guy right here, and I literally am blanking out on the name on it. Um no. <laughs> Hold on. I think it's a hit. No, nope. I'll get it one of these times. It's a parade, RGB parade. <laughs> See, I'm absolutely terrible. I gotta bring these back to the way I wanted it though. Hold on. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so you can see in our RGB parade, I sorry, I completely forgot the name of that. Um, we want to balance those colors out so they're not, one's not more extreme than the other. To me, that looks pretty balanced. I mean, obviously there's gonna be a small difference, but I like that look. I think that looks pretty different. So, and, th and that looks pretty even. So what we're going to do is now that we've set that white balance, what I can do is I can drag this tint and bring it to the green. Now, I think that's a little too much for me. I want it just to have a little bit more of a green tint. We can add some more in the creative or in the um, color wheels and curves panel. So I'm going to leave it right about there. I like that. That's got that green tint. Now, I want this to be very contrasty. So let's jack that con, um, that, or you know what, actually before we do that, let's set our white and black points. So we're going to do our highlights here. Um, we want it to be kind of harsh light, so I'm going to set them a little bit high. So as you can see, these highs are in the 90s and 80s. We're going to drop these blacks. We're going to, we don't want to crush them where it looks terribly fake. But let's try to get them. Let's bring that back. Let's see. Let's, you know what? Let's, instead of using our blacks, let's try... Jump on our shadows now. Again, I'm not a colorist here. I'm just trying to show you the way I would go about doing this. All right. So for me, I like that. It makes his the the cuts on his face and the black eyes look really, really intense. The only problem is the light was right here, up here, so it's blasting this side right here. But we're gonna fix that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna bump up that saturation. And look at that. That's starting to look like that gross bathroom look. We can see our greens are much higher, but not too much higher. We still have a sort of crushed image. Um, you know, we could technically crush it more, but I don't like that. To me, that look starts to look fake. All right, so let's jump into our curves. What I want to do is I want to bring those greens up, but in the highlights, not too much. See? 
So now we're starting to get that harsh green light like you would see, you know, from a fluorescent fixture that obviously doesn't have good lighting. Um, uh, you know, like flickering, that sort of look. So let's also jump into uh, our curves here. And I want to bring the saturation up on that red. Just a tad. So we'll bring that up. And I also want to bring the set that purple in his eye. Just so we really emphasize that. Man. Let's see. There you go. That brings up just a tiny bit. It's nothing huge. I don't know if you can see the difference of the green. And it brings out that low purple just a tiny bit. So that looks nice. I think we have a really cool looking image here. But now that the issue is, is this looks horrible. So let's try something. Yeah, that's not going to. Okay. We're going to go down to the vignette. We're going to make a pretty heavy vignette. But the problem is it looks kind of ugly. So let's bring that feather down. Roundness. Let's mess with that midpoint. So I like something like that. So it just kind of knocks down on that a tiny bit. Maybe, maybe that's a little bit extreme. But for me, this looks like what I would want. It's, um, you know, it's a high contrast because the light is supposed to be up high. You know, it's in like a bathroom. Granted, if we were in something like DaVinci Resolve, which is the advantage of using DaVinci Resolve, you could go and you could darken this section up with masks. Granted, could I do that on here? Yes. Is that overboard? Yeah. If you really want to do something like that, go into DaVinci. Um, but here we have a nice color. Nice look. Same with here. And of course, they balance off each other very well. We can easily tell that these are two different locations and that they're supposed to look completely different. So anyway, that's how you bring in uh, Cinema DNG raw footage from any Blackmagic camera or any other camera that shoots Cinema DNG. And that's how you edit those uh, raw files natively in Premiere Pro. And if you guys have any more questions or have any uh, videos you'd like to see, just comment down below. Um, I'd like if you guys could like and subscribe and you know share it around. Um, and I'm going to be putting out a lot more tutorials coming soon. So just uh, stay tuned. Catch you later.